So today is April 20th, 2021. I think it's around 3 something. I have no idea what time it is. I'll put it on the screen as a timestamp or something. But I was just looking at an article and they're thinking about tearing down Columbine. I don't know if it was in 2019 or 2020 when they wrote the article. I don't remember. But they're talking about tearing it down and then rebuilding another school on top of it and keeping the same name. And they're going to spend $70 million on it. First off, $70 million, you know how many mansions you can buy with that? <laughs> really? Mansions that are half the size or not even, or even the same size as Columbine? 70 million is a lot of dollars, and where are you going to get that from? Taxpayers? Come on now. If you want to build a new school, let me give you an idea, Mr. Glass. Let me tell you something. Let me give you an idea. I understand Columbine has some dark history, and it's not the only school that's ever got attacked. There was school shootings way before even Columbine. I'm watching timelines go all the way back to the 1800s. There was two students that walked into the classroom and shot their teacher. I think it was like 1800 something. So I mean, Columbine was not the first school shooting or the last. I'm trying to see what was in that tub. Um, but destroying the school and rebuilding it solves nothing. If you want to solve this tourism problem that you're having at Columbine, what you need to do, turn the school into a museum. And don't even just talk about the massacre. Talk about the good times you had and all that. Maybe put a picture on the wall of some of the victims or put on the wall that, that this was this teacher's room at this time. Mr. Such and Such, he was a great teacher. He was funny. I loved him. Just bring in good memories too. You don't have to like... Make the whole museum about the day that the massacre happened. You don't have to. Maybe bits and pieces, yeah. But throw some good in there too, man. Throw some good in there. Combat that good with that evil. It will always be part of your history, Mr. Glass. It will always be a part of your history. Or whoever's in charge, superintendents, or whoever's in charge of Columbine and what to do with it. If you're watching this, um... The best thing you should do is turn into a museum. Charge people that want to come in there about 50 to 60 bucks. And then have security at the front door. Do metal detectors. Have wands. And just pat people down and go through their purse. Make sure they ain't got no weapons on them. No knives, no guns, no axes, no hatchets, no machetes, no switchblades, nothing like that. Okay? And maybe... If the locals want to do it, or maybe some of the survivors want to do it, they could be tour guides, and they could walk through and talk about the school, you know? So people are going to be more interested when somebody has knowledge and been there, especially if they were there on the day of the massacre, you know what I'm saying? You know? So just have them walk through and be a tour guide, then maybe at the end, maybe if Dylan Klebold's mom has the time, you know, the tour guide brings them into a classroom right by the exit, sits them all down and has Dylan's mom talk to them and tell them, hey, it's okay to open up to the people you care about, the people that you trust. It's okay to be battling depression and battling anxiety. You know, I wouldn't tell my friends back in the day that. My friends wouldn't tell me that, but we're all open about it now. You know, there's no stigmatism around it. We're not like, oh my God, my friends are going to judge me. Look, if your friends judge you because of you being bipolar or you being schizophrenic or you having depression or anxiety or anger and they're telling you should just get over it, you need to cut their fucking ass off. You need to stop being friends with them. They don't care about you. Real friends don't care if you're battling depression. They will be there for you to help you through it. Real friends don't care if you're suffering from anxiety and you, like, I'm not saying they're not gonna care. I mean, don't get it twisted. I kind of said that wrong. They don't care. They're not going to judge you for you going through something like that. You know what I'm saying? So maybe Dylan's mom could talk about, you know, being more open about your emotions and talk more and talk to the people you care about and don't hold any emotions in. Whatever you're feeling, let somebody know that you trust. And on top of that, be like, don't glorify my son and don't look at him. You know, she's not going to be able to change every person's mind. 
You know, not everybody that's going to walk through is going to be a school shooter, but maybe she could change somebody's mind that's been going through something like that. You know what I'm saying? And give these kids some hope. And then use that money that they're, you know, getting off of the museum, put some back into the museum, and use some for a new school. And just open up a whole new school, call it a whole new name, and call it, get a new mascot. Call the mascot something else, too. You know what I'm saying? Just do that. That's it. It's a new school. Nobody's going to know. You know what I'm saying? Because if you just demolish the school, uh, rebuild it, and open it back up, guess what? It's a waste of time, and the stigma's still there, and people are still going to want to come and see the school. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing to do, turn it into a museum, build another school down the street, brand new name, new mascot, fresh new start for Littleton, Colorado. Booyah. But if you're going to build it, make sure it's more school safety. You know, school safe. Safety is key for everything. That's my opinion about the whole Columbine situation. Why do I have a massive headache? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, man. What I want to do is change kids' minds, man. I want the youth to understand that violence is not always great. It's not always great, man. Looking up to a serial killer, looking up to a mass shooter, looking up to somebody who beats his wife, looking up to somebody who's a game banger. It ain't, man. That life ain't the lifestyle you want. You're going to end up in jail or dead. And let me tell you, you don't want neither one of those. It's easy to sit here and tell me, oh, yeah, Nick, like, I look up to this person or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can't change my mind. But when your ass is sitting in the jail cell for 70 years, guess what? You're going to mentally change eventually. And if you don't, you don't. But most of the time, it's going to break you as a person. No human is immortal to pain or mental breakdowns. No human being is. I don't care how tough your ego is. Behind ego is nothing but fear. Believe that. Sorry that I recorded in here. This was the only place that didn't have wind blowing and I could talk pretty decent. My mom's in there on the phone, so I don't want to be loud and the dog's barking and then, you know, the wind outside's blowing, so. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe and don't shoot up a school. Don't shoot up no gas station. Don't shoot anything. If you want to go shoot something, go to a freaking target range. Me and my boy, we were just sitting on the front porch, what, two, three days ago, shooting a crossbow at a target. It was fun, you know? So, uh, y'all have a good day, and I will catch y'all later. I gotta finish up my coronavirus documentary. I haven't been feeling it, man. A lot of shit has been hitting the fan lately for me, so, you know, starting to rebuild my life over again. So, hopefully I can put all that stuff out so I can be done with it. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.